Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror media. I'm James A. Janice, and in honor of its five-year anniversary, today I'm looking at the music video for Common Shiner's Social Media Asicist, released in 2014. This music video is an incredibly well-made love song to horror films directed and edited by Zoran Gavoyich. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Zoran is one of my editors for Dead Meat. After meeting him at the Killer Clowns from Outer Space concert experience, I struck up a friendship with Zoran. Zorin, as well as an admiration for his astounding editing talents, as seen on his YouTube channel, Low Carb Comedy. He does stuff on there that I couldn't even begin to figure out, like his hilarious big head parody videos. Ladies and gentlemen, witness as I harness the power of the sun in the palm of my holy f***ing so I was thrilled when he offered his editing services to help ease me of the workload this channel demands. And ever since the end of the Halloween franchise last October, he's been taking the scripts that I write and laying in movie footage over my words. It can be scary how well he knows what footage I have in mind sometimes. And I'm very grateful to have his help since it saves me about 8 hours of work per kill count. Seriously Zorn, thank you man. It helps that he's a true blue horror aficionado, which is evident in the music video for Social Media his visual depiction of this very catchy song includes references both popular and esoteric, as well as a bunch of fun kills. And a sequel to this smash hit was released earlier this year, and you should definitely check it out. After all, it does feature cameos from your favorite Kill Counter and horror podcast host. Oh, Chelsea is also Pennywise. Yep, that's Chelsea there. How many kills will we tap our feet to in this absurdly awesome music video? Let's find out and get to them. The music video begins with a montage of our favorite Crystal Lake killer getting ready for school. Right off the bat, you can see that every frame of this thing is packed with horror references. I won't be able to point them all out in this video, but Zorin just so happened to make a video explaining them all. So go check that out and admire all the work that went into this production design. Jason's got a supportive family, although they're not too big on sharing their favorite breakfast foods. So he heads to Wes Craven's Slasher High on an empty stomach, hoping to avoid bullies like Ghostface and Samara, and to have a better time with his locker than Candyman. Luckily, his best bud Freddy Krueger is around to help him scout out the girl he has a crush on. Careful now, Jason. Don't go having any thoughts that are too naughty, especially since she's already got a boyfriend, that big old bully Michael Myers. In Stalking 101, while the gluttonous professor rattles on, Jason falls asleep and dreams of chasing after his favorite final girl. Despite his tendency to sleep through the lessons, Jason is freaking ace in this class. So the girl asks him for help and tells him to call her at 976 Evil, a nod to the 1988 horror flick that Robert England directed. Jason and Freddy are pumped for this fortuitous opportunity, so we get a cute getting ready montage that sees the young Voorhees try out all sorts of outfits from his past cinematic and video game adventures. But in the end, it's his everyday apparel that Freddy approves of. Jason shows up to the girl's house with some books and stuff and tries to help her learn the fundamentals of fucking around with pencils. They take a break from studying to watch the band playing this awesome song, Common Shiner, who turns out originated in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the second largest city of my home state and the birthplace of Ash's Boomstick. That's right, this sweet baby was made in Grand Rapids, Michigan. They watch as lead singer Morgan Foster gets punched in the nuts by a little shit, but the fun times and possibly accidental hand-holding end when Michael bursts through the front door and tells his lady to go on and get. Not you though, Jason, you bout to get a beat down by Michael's toadies, Pinhead, and Leatherface, which ends with a great reference to a classic moment from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Jason gets some advice from his dad about how he was able to win over his mom back in the day. But that just leads Jason to cyberstalk his crush on Facebook rather than doing it in real life. It's not a good substitute, man. You need that human interaction. Also, I love both the Tucker and Dale ad off to the right side here and the ad for Dr. Feinstone's Dental Academy on the other side of the browser. Get ready for the dentist kill counts to come out around Halloween when your teeth are getting rotten from all the candy you'll have had. Oh, one last great thing I have to mention is the comment left by Dr. Loomis on this picture of Michael as Ghost Bob. I can just hear Donald Pleasant saying these words in that amazing crazy voice of his. You don't know what death is. Jason gets an invitation from the girl, so he suits up and heads out to the slash dance to party it up with all the other horror icons in attendance, and that guy who's always eating stuff. That character, Unhealthy Doug, is played by Lee Russell and is an inside joke of Zorin's, 
having appeared in a bunch of his horror-centric videos, like Jason Voorhees' personal trainer and Sausage Fingers. Jason arrives just in time to see his crush get crowned as Slashdance Queen, a bittersweet moment for him because he's not up there with her. But look at how happy she is. But as Jason walks away, it turns out that people are playing a game on his crush, because she gets a bunch of pig's blood poured all over her head while standing on stage in front of everyone. Yep, turns out Jason's crush is Carrie, and if you're familiar with that movie or book, you know this ain't about to end well for the people in this gym. Yeah, that includes you, Pinhead. Let the kill counting begin! Michael is the first one to go, getting hit in the head with a bucket so hard it puts a dent in his mask. Carrie then kills Leatherface by telepathically throwing him through a table. Aw, poor sweet boy. He probably got bullied into helping the others with the prank. Next to go is Pinhead, hoisted by his own petard, if you will, before Carrie turns her attention to the band. The guitarist is killed by a guitar in the stomach, the drummer by a drumstick through the head, and the singer and bassist are electrocuted on the mic stand, in a kill that directly calls back to how the vice principal and English teacher died in the OG Carrie. Then unhealthy Doug suffers a fatal heart attack, but I'm not sure if that one can be blamed on Carrie. It's possible it was just his diet and lack of exercise. So what kind of regiment does he have? everyone. A wide shot of Carrie shows 18 additional bodies lying around the auditorium. Another two are seen by the door when Jason rushes back inside, with the male one in a billy mask being played by Zorin himself. An additional four bodies are seen as Jason and Carrie embrace each other, and the spin-around kiss they share reveals another male body on a pile of tables. Finally, as they walk off together holding hands, five more new bodies can be seen, giving us a grand total of 30 victims in this slash dance massacre. The music video ends with Jason and Carrie eager to start a new life together. I don't think anything could possibly go wrong here. Oh, uh, well, I guess the cops in this town don't fuck around. Not sure how one dude with a handgun was able to shoot them that many times, but it doesn't really matter now, does it? Since that dude ends up being the victim of a last-minute freeze-frame kill when Jason and Carrie are, of course, revealed to have survived the shooting. Oh, and there's a post credit scene where Freddy discovers the carnage he avoided and leaves to kill another day. How many people fell victim to this social media massacre? Let's find out and get to the numbers. One, two, three, four! There were 39 victims in the social media masochist music video, and according to Zorn himself, they consisted of 25 men and 14 women. How many of them were horror icons? Go watch that reference video and find out. With a runtime of only 5 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 7.69 seconds. Who boy! I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to drummer Vijay Bangalore. I love it when a person is killed in a way that reflects their occupation. So a drumstick through the head for this guy wins major props for me. Dull machete for lamest kill will go to Michael Myers, cause the big bad should need more than a bucket to the dome to take him down. And that's it. The Social Media Asochist music video was released in 2014 by my editor and friend Zorn Gavoyish, who released a sequel earlier this year that somehow includes even more horror references. I'll probably end up kill counting that one day, but until I do, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count. I want to thank some patrons like Clayton Stevens, Brandon Sullivan, Rory Elford, Lucas Sakirgill, and Def Redco. And of course, my editors, Zorn Gavoyage and Bree. Their work is invaluable to the Dead Meat channel. They're the reason Dead Meat is what it is today. So if you made it this far in the video, why don't you leave a comment thanking them? Thanks everyone. Be good people.